And so I think my greatest gift is that I just empower people to take steps towards where they want to be. And I've done that up until this point in business and money. And I just feel like I have so much more left in me. Cool. That was fun to say. Yeah. I just noticed how much more money I make when I'm really in my zone, like really creative, dialed in. And so I did a little bit of an exercise recently where I was like, okay, what would it take to like be in this, in that zone? And I, I don't know, I, I don't, again, I don't have like my, I don't have a thing. Like I don't go to an Indians game and I'm like, I'm in the zone, I can make so much. I, I just, it just comes sometimes. And I don't really know how to make that happen. So I started to identify, okay, what takes me out of that? Like what immediately takes me out of the zone? And I was like, uh, traffic, meetings, interruptions, email. These are the things that just take me out of the zone. Okay, so if I protected myself against those things, I would at least have situations where I'd have more of a chance of being in that zone, okay? And then what things historically tend to put me in there? What are some times that I've done that? Uh, nature, being around good people, like deep conversations with people. Travel seems to do it, like when I get on airplanes, I get it a lot. Uh, and like novelty, new things, new experiences. Okay, so I don't know that I'm gonna like get in the zone if I do all those things and eliminate the other things, but it gives me a good shot. And so how do I structure more of those opportunities? And so we were gonna do our quarterly retreat in the office. And I was like, going to the office requires me to sit in traffic. Uh, it's like where my reference point is for meetings and interruptions. So let's not do that. Let's travel or go someplace new we didn't get on a flight. We drove 15 minutes outside of downtown Austin. And um, let's all be together. So let's live, work, play here together for a couple days. And that'll give us a good shot of firing on all cylinders. And uh, I think the total cost here was like $2,000 for the week, which was like $2,000 just to go 15 minutes outside of town. If it puts us in the zone of genius, that is could be millions of dollars that we make as a result of us being very intentional working together. So that to me is a risk worth taking. How do you feel? Welcome back to Austin. Evan is here, everybody. Hey. Hey. Things and one for the capitalism side of things. And if we're really looking at the purpose of Ryan Daniel Moran LLC, it's to grow Ryan Daniel Moran's influence in the marketplace and open opportunities that lead him closer to owning the Cleveland Indians. That's honest. That's when we're looking at the personal brand side of things. And I have been resistant to admit we're building a personal brand, but we are. And if you even look at the, the examples that are in the Vivid Vision, they're all personal brands that have a much bigger impact. They have a bigger empire attached to them but it required one to move or another to move first. So the reason why, even though the, the company isn't who we want to be, the reason why I leave the blaze in there is because if you look at how they were built, you had one person, founder of the company with a really big audience. He then created a media company. And now there's other personalities that are only big because they got plugged into that media company is a great example of who we want to be. And then there's other examples in the Vivid Vision that, per that perfectly reflect the impact that those media companies can have. When you look at Dave Asprey's impact on building a performance company, or even, it's not in the Vivid Vision, but Joe Rogan's impact on a company just down the road from us in Austin. So as much as I have resisted to owning the fact that we're building a personal brand, we are building a personal brand with a media empire as part of that. And so that's 
the idea of having the two houses, even though they're completely linked. So the purpose of RDM is to grow his influence and open opportunities that lead him closer to owning the Indians. And the purpose of the media side of it, capitalism.com, is to produce content that helps capitalists or high achievers create the change they want to see in their world. Operative word, some of you pointed out, was there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Not what we think is best for them, not where we think we need to guide them to go, but where they want to go, where their personal responsibility desires them to go, where their pursuit of happiness takes them. Not, not ours, not what we think is best. Have to push a specific agenda unless we see an agenda as a threat or particularly beneficial to help people on their own journey. But what they want to see in their world, that's the purpose of capitalism.com to represent that. And my message is a part of that. And as of right now, as C Money pointed out, the focus has been and probably will continue to be until we crack that nut, largely dependent on me which means where we are in the process requires me to be in that zone where I'm spreading that message and being the pioneer for that message so that it's easier for us to bring in that right content partner or those other content voices so that eventually we have those other names that give the media property more of a balanced voice that isn't so dependent on me, which is where we wanna go. But we need to crawl before we walk, before we run. And that's where we are. So I feel a lot of peace and freedom owning the fact that this is where we're going, but let's look at where we are. And what do we need to focus on based on where we are in the process, rather than what do we need to change or force or step on the gas before we're ready in order to make getting here easier versus trying to build the whole house at once. How does that land with all y'all? This quarterly is so important because we did a lot of licking of our wounds in the previous two quarters and learned a lot of things, a lot of research and development of things that didn't work. And I've put in the entire last couple of months into focusing on Okay, now that we've learned some things that don't work, what are we going to take with us and what are we going to shed? What things from the past are we gonna allow us allow to continue? And what are we just gonna leave in the past? And we're doing a lot of refocusing on where we are, being really honest about where we are so that we can have a clear idea of where we wanna go next. And, and it was really important that we get into a new area have a re like a refocus as a team so we can move forward in a way that's lighter, easier, more fun, um, and more compelling than what we've done in the past. All right, let's do it. Woo, Money. let's keep going. Keep coin. Keep coin. What's up, C-Money? <laughs> my experience and my family feeling like feeling I was alone, like I was on my own. There was no one who's going to mentor me. There's no one who's going to show me the way. Like, I figured this shit out. I figured money out. I figured relationships out. I, I figured... Uh, health out. I figured it out on my own with the help of mentors that I sought out. Like I put it on my back and I figured it out. And that made me very lonely, burnt out, mm -hmm. depressed. And now I figure that part out. Yep. And what that gives me a unique ability to do is come back and speak to that man who feels alone, who feels unmentored, who feels lost. And I'm of the opinion that suicide, depression, school shootings happen because we have a lack of that mentorship, fatherhood, masculinity, showing the next generation of men what to do. Okay. And that's a much bigger Absolutely. purpose than how do you make $10,000 a month on the internet. Yep. That is this much of what I feel like is in my tank. Okay. Um, and, and what's interesting is I get just as much, if not more joy of when C Money records me making a, a paleo banana cake 
and he posts it on Instagram and I show what's in it, I get just as much joy out of that than I do sharing a podcast episode about a business strategy that's working for me. Okay. Even though people aren't willing to necessarily pay for the paleo cake recipe, mm -hmm. although there will be a book on this at some point, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I get just as much joy out of that because it's an equal part of like the total pie of what I'm trying to, of like what I want to represent in the world. Um, so, The areas in which I want to speak to in this global message are my journey in and out of faith and religion. Mm -hmm. like, and, and to do the same thing that I've done in business of charter new territory and come back and share the path. I've done that in business. I want to do the same thing in faith and religion. Okay. Do you see that serving the same audience? Or do I do. I do. So you see an AJ type buying into that? Um, I don't know that AJ buys into it, but I know he pays attention. Okay. I know that makes him more likely to want to buy my business trainings okay. or come to my events. Yeah. Um, I want to do the same thing in, uh, I don't think health and fitness, I don't consider myself like an expert there, but I, I, there, there, there's like a piece of that that I, there's like an itch there I need to scratch. Okay. And that could almost be like the side thing that I just enjoy that people yeah. watch because I, they seem to get excited about mm -hmm. it. Um, and you know who does this well okay. is James Altucher. Yep. James Altucher just lives his life with his goofy hair and goofy teeth. Yep. Talks about his divorce, talks about his failures as a father yep. and all that. Yep. And he built Choose Yourself Media, which is the training products of how we got there okay. or how someone got there. That's a really great example. Okay. James is the interesting character that people are following, but they're buying into the, the results that were mostly wealth minded. And he writes books on all kinds of stuff and he communicates a message on all kinds of stuff. Um, and as a result of him sharing all this stuff, people are like, this guy has a lot of things figured out. Mm -hmm. The result I want is this one, and I'm gonna learn it because I trust this guy who has been so honest about the rest of his journey. Okay. So Choose Yourself Media is my capitalism. The only thing that's different is I want more voices than just Ryan yep. on capitalism.com. Okay. Cool. That felt really good to say. Yeah, I can tell you're energized as you're saying. Is there anything else yeah. you wanna add there? Religion I brought up. Um, I want to, I like talking about health and fitness. Yeah. Um, if we added like a long, at some point, you know, I'm 30 now. When I'm like 38, I'm pretty sure my passion is going to be longevity. And then that might end up being part of the journey, but not yeah. right now. But I want the option to. There's something about relationships that feels really yeah, important to me. Yeah. And, and, the re and like, hell, I want to build a compound, yeah. right? Because of the relationships. And it's just because I know how lonely men are. And I know how lonely Americans are. And I know how freaking lonely American men are. Uh, and entrepreneurs are. And when you put that little circle, we're the loneliest friggin' people on the planet because we feel like there's something in us that's weird and we can't connect. And mm -hmm. there was something that happened usually in our childhood that made us feel alone. And now we're carrying that, trying to fill it through other means. And so I feel uniquely able to speak to that. And that has, again, more impact than making $10,000 a month. Yep. So there's, there's a piece to that that I want to speak to. And then there's like a, a personal or self development part of that, of like just empowering the person. I, I think probably the biggest gift I give to the world is when I give someone the how to plan, it just empowers them to take a freaking step. Mm -hmm. Like when I show that like 80% of my job is when working with an entrepreneur is like, like I was at, uh, um, I was hanging out with uh, Jordan 
on Saturday. Okay. And he has this really cool idea for a physical products brand. Great, great idea. Like, I, I, I hope he asked me to be a part of it. Yep. And all, 80% of my job was to get him to stop talking about all the stuff over here. Be like, maybe we should order a prototype. <laughs> and him asking questions about like, well, what do you do about, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, maybe we should order 10 units and test it out. And so 80% of my job is cutting out all the things you shouldn't do so that mm -hmm. you can take one step forward. Okay. That's a very empowering thing. Yeah. And, and I think that's like when I make the light bulb come on for a lot of entrepreneurs. It's like, it's like when they tell me you gave me permission to go take an action. Yep. I think that's probably my biggest gift to entrepreneurs. And that's like the empowering step to an entrepreneur, but it is the same type of empowering in a bunch of different areas that I think is my true calling. Like it's, it's like an empowering of the person to go in a direction. It's like the freedom from where they are in like normalized society. It's like that sovereign, like that sovereignty of taking responsibility to take an action. I mean, if you think that to me, that is what capitalism is. Like the, the reason I love capitalism is that it forces you to be responsible to take on action yeah. in some direction and when you get rid of capitalism you create a system that keeps people at a certain level and that can be safe but it's not free and so i think my greatest gift is that i just empower people to take steps towards where they want to be and i've done that up until this point in business and money and i just feel like i have so much more left in me that was fun to say. Yeah. Do you have any clarifying questions about that? Because I know I just like word vomited a lot. Uh, I probably that. will once I have a chance to go back through. Okay.